What's up you guys? So if you caught my last few videos, then you know I'm dropping tea on the hit 2000 show Girlfriends every hour on the hour today. And in this video, I wanna talk about something very sensitive and very serious, and I don't want it to be taken the wrong way. And that's the stereotype of the loud black woman. The creator of Girlfriends, Mara Barker Keel, revealed to Harper's Bazaar how she used the loud mouth of the character Tony Childs, who was very loud and wasn't afraid to take up space, to get the attention of studio executives and sell the show. And it sounds to me like Mara used the loud black woman stereotype that the predominantly white television industry seems to love to sell them a show that actually broke stereotypes about black women. So I wanna get into the genius of that strategy in this video. And I really want you guys to take in what Mara Brock Akil was able to do in pitching girlfriends and give me your opinions on using that strategy in real life. Mara Brock Akil told Harper's Bazaar, what was unique about Girlfriends that was different than Sex in the City was Sex in the City was all about their dating relationships with a girl group to discuss it with. I wanted to shift it to the chosen family of sisterhood and use Joan and Tony as my Carrie and Mr. Big. It was always about that, whether or not that relationship was going to make it and then letting all the other ones wrap around it. Black women did not have any seat at the table in Sex in the City. And although I still really enjoyed that show, I didn't see that as a rejection, I saw it as an opportunity. So when this moment came, this pitch meeting came, when they said what they wanted, I said, well, I want to give you a very modern take on female friendships, similar to Sex in the City in tone and tonality. And that got their attention. Harper's Bazaar goes on to report, to further seal the deal during the pitch meeting for Girlfriends, Mara Bank, not on the show's lead character, Joan Clayton, the perpetually single but successful lawyer who would eventually go on to be portrayed by Tracy Ellis Ross, but rather her best friend, the hotly debated and gloriously bougie Antoinette Tony Childs. Mara Brock Akil said, quote, I plug one of my characters from my failed pilot that I loved in that first pitch meeting, and it was Tony. If you think about it, at that time, she was such a fun character. She's very loud and takes up space. And those are the kinds of characters that get executives' attention. One of them was intrigued to the point that I realized, okay, I'm going to be really real. I think he had an attraction to black women. <laughs> so I played up on that. When I talked about Tony, I was just telling him about a girl he should date. And he stayed intrigued. He stayed intrigued and said, hey, Mara, I want you to come back. I want that show. And then I came back and realized, oh, what did I just sell? And I went back there and then I pulled it all together with the theme of girlfriends. So you guys, there were two things going on here. One, Mara was using the fact that predominantly white network executives expect black sitcom characters to be loud. That's a character trait and stereotype they seem to look for kind of like Kim and Nikki Parker from the Parkers, which Mara Brock Akil also worked on. So instead of using the main character, Joan Clayton, who was actually not outspoken and more passive aggressive and neurotic than anything else, Mara used the character of Tony Childs to sell the show. Tony Childs' character was known for not being afraid to speak her mind, even more so than the character of Maya Wilkes, in my opinion. And so Mara used Tony's character, who was loud and not afraid to take up space, to sell the show to the network executives, who seemed to grab onto the stereotype of the loud black woman. And I'm curious what y'all think about that strategy. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about that. Secondly, it seems Mara Brock Akil also played on the fact or her opinion that at least one of the network executives seemed to be attracted to her description of Tony Childs and attracted to black women. And when she noticed he was intrigued, she started pitching Tony Childs as a woman that he would want to date. So not only is she specifically using the loud black woman stereotype to pitch the show, but she's also using the attraction that some white men have to black women to pitch the show as well. And what she did as far as playing on stereotypes of black women seemed to work because the show got picked up and she was actually able to use girlfriends as a vehicle to break stereotypes about black women. She told Harper's Bazaar, 
Joan, Maya, Tony, and Lynn were black on purpose. They were intentionally going to be flawed on purpose because very simply put, I don't believe in positive images just as much as I don't believe in negative images. I would say perfect images are just as damaging as negative images because our humanity does not exist in those extremes. I was charged to give honor, space, celebration to our full humanity as black women. We're not perfect, but yet in television at that time, even the black audience wanted the perfectionism, whereas white people get the luxury of their humanity. I was raised to want and have the best for myself, and then I want that for my people. So what I'm going to give my people is the space to be human, and that's the best we can do for each other. And I love that. I love that. I love that, you guys. The luxury of being human. The luxury of humanity. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Omar Brock Akil specifically using the secondary character Tony Childs to sell the stereotype of the loud black woman to network executives. And it working. Leave a comment and share your thoughts on that. As always, thanks for watching.